Hello everyone and welcome to a very interesting game from round 7 of the 2018 Grand K Chess Classic. Uh, here we have a game between Maxime Vachier Lagrave and Fabiano Caruana. Uh, and I think this game will perfectly illustrate uh, is Fabi ready for November or not. Uh, well, to some degree. Uh, but uh, I, I don't have any, any photos uh, as of yet, but I might have, I might have some photos for you tomorrow. Uh, we will see. Uh, so let's let's just dive straight into this game. Fabi, Fabi is still in the lead in this tournament, uh, although he's tied with Maxim Vachiela Grav. So definitely, definitely, this could be uh, the game that that might decide the winner of the tournament. Uh, although there are still rounds to go. This is round seven, so two more rounds. Uh, so Maxim opens with c4, uh, the English opening. We have e5, knight to c3, knight to f6, uh, and knight to f3. Knight to c6. So the four knights variation of the English. Uh, g3, uh, bishop to b4, and bishop to g2. Uh, we have castles, castles, and e4 now. Knight to g5, bishop captures on c3, uh, pawn captures on c3, and rook to e8. Uh, queen to c2, piling up on that e4 pawn, and uh, queen to c2 is a reasonable move. Uh, Fabi says that uh, he was he was definitely expecting either f3 or, or d3, uh, but f3 and d3 are are extremely highly theoretical moves, so you have to really really know what you're doing if you decide to play this, and Fabi, Fabi was ready for this, and he says queen to c2 is just a, you know, a reasonable move. Uh, and I don't think I, I will be putting any interviews in the description below, uh, since I don't think there will be any interviews uh, with the players about this game, but if you, if you uh, check it out, there will be like an entire coverage of round 7, so you can just fast, fast forward uh, to the part where, where uh, Peter and, uh, and Jan are interviewing Fabi. It's not like an official interview uh, where there's like a close-up of either of them, but you know, uh, he, he will analyze some moves. Uh, so okay, queen to c2, now comes d5, c captures on d5, queen captures on d5, and d3. So again, uh, going for that e4 pawn, as you can't capture, as the bishop is eyeing the queen on d5. So bishop to f5, uh, we have bishop to f4, now attacking the c7 pawn, and now h6. Uh, knight captures on e4, knight captures on e4, and now queen to b2. Queen to b2, uh, there are a lot of moves possible uh, in this position. For example, you could immediately capture the, the piece back. Uh, bishop captures, bishop captures, queen captures, queen captures, rook captures, bishop captures on c8, and after you kick the bishop back, uh, you grab on e2, and white didn't really accomplish anything here. Uh, if anything, black is better, as white's pawn structure is a bit messed up here. He has three pawn islands, black has two. So definitely uh, advantage for black. Uh, so after after this move, Fabi said that during the game he didn't really calculate this too much. Uh, he was expecting maybe c4 to come, but uh, then then queen to b2 was played, and he didn't uh, think much of this move. Uh, he defended the b7 pawn. He played b6, uh, and here uh, again he thought about bishop captures on c7. What if uh, then rook a to c8 again, kicking the bishop back, uh, and then knight to a5. And he thought that uh, this was this was. This was pretty good for, for black, uh, that he would ca have compensation as he's piling up here uh, on the weak c3 pawn. Uh, and after white captures back, as he does have to, uh, for example, bishop captures, bishop captures, queen captures. Uh, it's uh, def definitely a nice compensation. Again, uh, piling up here on d pawn, the c3 pawn is weak, the a pawn is weak. Uh, so, again, again, Fabi thought that this was okay. So, never really worried about this c7 pawn. Uh, but here, rook f to d1 was played. Uh, and we have queen to c5. Uh, d captures on e4, bishop captures on e4, and now uh, bishop to f1. Bishop to f1, uh, you don't really want to capture. Uh, you could capture on e4, allow rook captures, uh, and then again, you don't really gain anything by grabbing this. But there was a, a reasonable idea after rook captures to rook to d7. Uh, of, of getting a lot of activity here for white, but, uh, but Maxim didn't, uh, didn't think this was worth it, obviously. Uh, so after bishop captures on e4, bishop to f1. Uh, so now after this bishop moves, the e2 pawn will be protected. Uh, we have rook to e7, Fabi is preparing to double up on the e-file, a4 now, and uh, rook a to e8. And uh, Fabi said that he really liked this a4 move, but next move, uh, uh, Maxim plays, um, uh, Fabi says that that he maybe he kind of missed the idea. Uh, because he liked either a4 or rook a to c1, but a4 and then rook a to c1, that this is kind of... Uh, mixing two ideas into one. So here, Fabi played g5, kicking the bishop back, bishop to d2, uh, and now queen to f5. 
uh, we have f3 and f3 is f3 is a mistake but there's really there, there really isn't a better move uh, other than f3 uh, here Fabi, uh, after f3 Fabi played uh, queen to c5 check and he thinks uh, that uh, uh, Maxim missed this while he played f3 uh, because now you can't go king to g2 king to g2 loses on the spot uh, to bishop captures on f3 uh, this comes with check, you capture, and now you get the terrible rook to e2 check. Uh, bishop captures, rook captures, you move the king, and now queen to f2, uh, and there is no defense whatsoever against queen captures on h2, or queen to g2, checkmate. Uh, or even, yeah, okay, a lot of checkmates here. Uh, and another interesting thing is, uh, after this bishop captures on f3, you can't even capture with the king. Uh, because now queen to g1 is deadly, not allowing the king to come back, and now, well... I mean, you have a king on f3, that's uh, that's bad, bad in itself, but uh, it, it's actually a forced checkmate. Uh, for example, whatever white plays, you can open up an attack on the black queen, maybe try something there. Uh, but now simply knight to e5 check, king goes up the board, f5 check, uh, you have to you have to capture. Now queen f2 check, uh, you block, simply rook f8 check, king goes back, captures, captures, captures with the queen, uh, king to d5, and now... Queen to c4, a, a very nice checkmate. So uh, a beautiful king hunt, and uh, this might be what uh, Maxim missed uh, after queen to c5, that he couldn't play king to g2. Uh, if he saw that, he, he might uh, figure out a different plan other than f3. So he played king to h1, uh, but now bishop to d5, and uh, white's position is simply terrible. Uh, all of black's pieces are extremely active, uh, the rooks are beautiful here, uh, white's pieces are completely passive down there, white's queen side pawns are, are, are weak. So uh, bishop to e1, uh, and here we have bishop to c4, now with a triple attack uh, on, on the d2 pawn. Uh, on the e2 pawn. Here e4 was played, uh, bishop captures uh, on f1, and now bishop to f2, you do have to play this uh, to open up an attack uh, on the piece to, to capture it. Uh, and uh, while you do get the piece back, after queen to c4, uh, rook captures, you, you lose another pawn on the queen side. So now it's three against one on the queen side. This is pretty pretty terrible for white. Uh, c4 was played, knight to e5, bishop to d4, uh, g4 now, uh, pawn captures, and now queen to d7. Uh, queen to c3, uh, c5, uh, bishop captures, rook captures, and uh, queen to f3. Kind of kind of pressuring that f7 square. Uh, rook captures on e4, <clears throat> so grabbing yet another pawn. Uh, rook c to d1 attacking the queen, and now queen to e6. And now, uh, with this uh, powerful battery on the e-file, uh, there's really nothing white can do here. Uh, it's simply, uh, the position on the queen side is, is completely winning for black, so all black really has to do is, is, is exchange pieces. Uh, so, g6, uh, g5 trying to open up some lines of attack. Uh, h captures, we have rook to d5. Uh, g4 now by Fabi, queen to c3, uh, rook to e5, and after rook to e5, uh, in this position, uh, Maxim Vashielagrav resigned the game. Uh, yeah, okay, queen to c3, maybe going for some rook to g5 ideas, but uh, after king f8, there's, uh, there is there isn't anything a white could hope for here, except for maybe a blunder. Uh, but uh, as Fabi is the World Chess Championship challenger, I don't think I don't think he would miss a move like this. So after Rook to e5, uh, Maxim uh, Vashir Lagrar resigned the game, as there's really uh, nothing uh, to hope for here. Uh, if you exchange, we already said this. Uh, there's really no no point in playing this position uh, with with two pawns down. It's a completely winning position for Black. Uh, and even if you try something like mo moving the rook to keep the game going, uh, it's simply too easy to exchange for Black. Black can simply give a check here, and after King moves, now rook to e2. Uh, you threaten checkmate, and uh, White has to exchange some pieces here. Captures, captures, again you threaten checkmate. Uh, and after rook to f2, again you have to capture, capture. And uh, now you're, you're, it's a queen and pawn endgame uh, where Black is up two pawns, but you don't even have to play this. You can simply give queen f3 check. Uh, you can give up one pawn, uh, but after queen captures and king captures on f3, uh, now you're only one pawn up, but completely winning. After a6 and b5, there's really nothing white, white can do here. So yeah, uh, very nice. After this rook to e5, Maxim resigned the game, like we said. And uh, an excellent victory for Fabiano Coruana, who is now uh, in clear first uh, in the Grand Gate Chess Classic, and two more rounds to go until the end of the tournament. Uh, I will show you one more game from this round, uh, 
at least one more so I, I will include the standings uh, in, in that video uh, so I, I don't spoil anything in this one so yeah uh, that's the game I do hope you enjoyed it uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, with another game from the Granky Chess Classic